Ja, nur noch ein paar kurze Worte von mir. Mein Name ist Robert Nickel, ich arbeite für die Piraten Software AG. Ähm, wir sponsern den Kurs, beziehungsweise Pirata Software AG ist ähm, Antivirusunternehmen aus Bochum, also lokal hier. Wir sponsern den Kurs seit mehreren Semestern, die Semester wieder. Sponsoring heißt in dem Fall, dass wir einen zusätzlichen Abendevent anbieten, wo auch der Speaker eingeladen ist, wo wir euch alle einladen, zu uns in die Firma zu kommen, beziehungsweise in Gebäuden neben der Firma, das ist die Academy. Äh, da gibt es Essen, Trinken für umsonst, das ist eine nette Atmosphäre. Kann man äh, dem Speaker noch zusätzliche Fragen stellen oder einfach mit Leuten aus der IT-Security-Szene in Kontakt kommen, zumindest die eher technischeren Leute sind da gerne vertreten. Insofern seid herzlich eingeladen. Um 6 Uhr sind die Türen offen, um 7 Uhr ungefähr gibt es Essen. Und ja, Adresse steht hier, 5. Allee 178. Wenn ihr wollt, kommt vorbei. Und jetzt Thomas Patzke. Okay. Danke. Okay, so let's start. Uh, so, uh, welcome to the talk about near field communication security. Uh, my name is Thomas Patzke. As uh, Markus already announced, uh, uh, until November of last year, my name was uh, Skora. So, when you maybe heard something about uh, Thomas Skora, uh, we are the same persons. Um, <laughs> Um, uh, yes, how I uh, get into security. So I started with security related topics uh, somewhere in the 90s, in the middle of the 90s and um, studied at RWTH Aachen, uh, got my university degree at uh, 2006 uh, and my thesis was about voice of IP security. Um, I'm uh, a security consultant uh, since uh, 2006. Uh, and my primary uh, area is uh, security analysis or penetration testing. Um, I'm uh, mostly concentrated on uh, web application security, uh, not only web application, also uh, uh, native applications or SAP applications, uh, and also security analysis of uh, unusual stuff uh, like um, point of sales terminals, cache machines, head units in cars, or whatever is interesting. Uh, when I'm not uh, doing security at my employee, uh, I'm doing security in my spare time too. <laughs> um, so security research in various areas, uh, like for example, near field communication was one uh, of the areas of my interest. Uh, I like to write security tools and I'm very interested in cryptography. Um, so what the ta talk is about, it's, uh, I will first give a brief introduction to uh, near field communication so that uh, you get an idea what uh, is covered uh, by this and uh, then I will uh, present you some of uh, my um, results of reverse engineering of the GeoGo system or, and uh, the security of uh, credit cards. Um, I will show you how um, access control uh, systems can be uh, 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 circumvented by uh, replay attacks um, and I will also say uh, something about how you could uh, build secure, secure NFC systems when you get in the situation somewhere in the future. Um, and I will present you some tools uh, that you can use to make your own uh, NFC security or NFC uh, research. Um, there are many possibilities and uh, this um, I will present you too. So, uh, what is NFC? NFC is uh, near field communication, um, not the Nintendo family computer here in this context. Um, and uh, the most important uh, property of uh, near field communication is that you can communicate across uh, very short distances and the power supply is done uh, by the reader. So, you have such cards and uh, the cards can, communi can communicate with, uh, with a card reader which is on the wall or whatever and then a door gets opened or a payment is made. So um, uh, these are usual NFC um, uh, uh, use cases. Um, the frequency is uh, 13, uh, um, megahertz usually and you see the um, transfer rates are not very high so NFC is not used for um, multimedia stuff, uh, it's only used for uh, short communication where not uh, much data has to be uh, is, um, uh, exchanged. 
Um, there are uh, several ISO standards which uh, define uh, mm. NFC, uh, uh, so the communication, how is it made, how the bits are uh, communicated and some basic uh, communication protocols. But uh, there are also uh, other systems which are not covered by this uh, ISO standards. So uh, one example are uh, uh, proximity cards which, uh, which work in the area of 125 kilohertz, uh, so very low frequency. These are normally very dumb uh, cards. I will show you later um, that are used in the area of access control uh, mostly. I have seen it. Uh, Logic Prime, a uh, uh, very widespread system which is used um, a, a, with a, pro a proprietary system uh, also works, uh, works in 13,56 MHz uh, uh, frequency area and uh, this is also often used in companies as company card for everything, for access control, for uh, uh, payment uh, uh, in the canteen and so on. Uh, and uh, there are different other systems uh, that are not covered by the standards. Um, and generally, you can say NFC itself is a subset of FID. FID also covers uh, applications like uh, logistics, where you have texts that uh, communicate across a few meters. Um, uh, but uh, this is uh, nothing I have uh, done something with. So this talk is uh, factually only about uh, NFC. Um, yes, uh, use cases. So, uh, as I mentioned, access control, payment, um, tickets, and public transportation. There are uh, uh, NFC tags used too. For example, in in London, in the subway, uh, is a uh, very uh, known um, uh, use uh, case of it. Um, determination of position. Maybe you uh, uh, have seen this touch and travel system of Deutsche Bahn, which is used to determine uh, with your smartphone that you are uh, on a, a certain uh, station and then the billing starts from this sta station where you have logged in and uh, the billing is finished at uh, the station where you log out uh, with, with your app. Um, Verification of ownership when you have, uh, I can show it to you um, here on my old uh, driver's license, there's this is uh, lab ID sticker and this is used to regularly, uh, um, uh, that I can prove regularly every half year that I own this driver license and uh, not uh, the police has taken me off because I have uh, done whatever. Um, so also use case for it, uh, smart posters, business cards. So generally you can say when you need to store a tiny amount of data and um, uh, want something that works uh, con uh, contactless, you can use uh, NFC for it. Uh, this is how uh, NFC tech looks like. So normally uh, this is the size um, uh, in real. Um, and here you see uh, it in big. And uh, what we can see here is uh, the whole area of the tag is the antenna and only this small dark spot is uh, the chip itself which uh, contains the logic. And this is a normal uh, uh, NFC tag for, for the um, uh, communication in the 13,56 uh, megahertz uh, uh, frequency area. <coughs> So power supply is uh, done uh, via an induction field. Um, the uh, <coughs> NFC tech uh, gets its uh, power uh, from the reader. It doesn't need an own uh, battery or uh, somewhat. Uh, so this is a very uh, nice uh, property of uh, the systems. Um, and uh, there are two transmission modes defined, passive and active, but the normal uh, mode that you would uh, meet in the, in the real life is, is the passive uh, communication. So the passive communica uh, communication is connectionless uh, and uh, you have two roles, the initiator, the reader and the target. And usually <coughs> you see communication in a uh, way that, uh, li like uh, in HTTP, so the initiator uh, requests something from the uh, target and the target sends the response back. 
Uh, active systems are uh, connection oriented, uh, the communication partners are equal, but uh, yes, I don't have seen this in, in reality. So it's specified, it's uh, certainly used somewhere, but um, um, I didn't have the possibility to uh, do any research on uh, such systems. Um, low level uh, communication, so uh, at a very low level uh, you have uh, 8 bit and when one parity bit and uh, the basic protocol is you have a command, a parameter, data and a CRC uh, uh, checksum. Uh, this is defined in the ISO uh, standard here. Um, then an additional standard defines uh, a tr transmission protocol with uh, some uh, additional fields which are uh, not so important for uh, security, um, uh, for the security view. Um, and yes, uh, mostly when I uh, um, do the talk, people ask uh, how it is when multiple texts are in, in the rear of a reader. So this is a reader, here is uh, in this, uh, um, probably are multiple uh, text cards, credit cards, uh, and uh, whatever. And when a reader comes to um, uh, to the cards, then uh, all cards get activated, and uh, one card has to be selected. And uh, this is a pro uh, process uh, which is done by the anti-collision protocol. And um, I uh, it works so that every card and tech sends its UID and uh, the initiator selects one of these UIDs by sending it back and uh, finally one um, card is uh, uh, chosen. Um, this uh, <laughs> protocol looks like this but I would like to show it to you now uh, live here. So I have set up here my Uh, Proxmark, uh, uh, it's in the client directory, okay, uh, yeah, is it okay? Good. <coughs> so the Proxmark is uh, basically it's a software defined radio uh, which can do nice things when you want to do um, uh, NFC hacking. It can read cards, so act as a normal reader. It can uh, get between a card and a reader and do some sniffing. It can simulate a card and it uh, works in uh, both important frequency areas. And now what I will do is um, I put here some, some um, cards on the table. So these are uh, uh, four cards plus, uh, plus one uh, tag and uh, put the antenna in between and now uh, I will start to, le um <coughs> to read this uh, text with my phone. So when I got here. As usually. <laughs> ah. <coughs> So when this works, normally when I do this uh, in uh, this demo, this didn't work. At home it works perfectly, but now uh, you are lucky, it works, it seems to work. Um, I can, uh, can I yeah, bit make it a bit smaller? I hope this is still uh, readable. Uh, uh, is it still readable or? Yes. <laughs> uh, so I, I have later screenshots so uh, we can uh, see this uh, also in, in Big Zen. Um, so let it show me to you the most interesting part here is the beginning. <coughs> so uh, you see here where the exclamation marks is, these are collisions because techs uh, try to say something, say, uh, send their, uh, their ID uh, because the uh, reader requests it by them and <coughs> um, these are collisions 
and the reader has to select one of the stacks. And uh, he repeats this process uh, over and over again until he gets uh, um, uh, an ID. <coughs> And when an ID is, uh, is uh, uh, listened successful on uh, over the air, then the tag select selects it. And you see here, this is a select UID packet. And uh, so at uh, this point, the reader uh, has successfully uh, 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 sniffed a, Uh, UID, so unique ID of the tag, and uh, selects this tag. This is uh, a multi-layered process. So uh, first, uh, uh, three, the first three bytes of the uh, ID are selected, and in the second uh, area, every tag with this prefix sends mm -hmm. uh, again its UID, and the reader selects it uh, again. So this is a um, selection process. Now I uh, sniff only the communication between my smartphone and this tag. On this tag, uh, a URL is stored. So this is also a use case. Uh, smart posters uh, uh, are the marketing term for it. You have a tag, you have a URL stored on it, you put a um, <coughs> uh, 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 smartphone on it or a tablet or whatever uh, uh, can uh, uh, work with this. And uh, then the URL is requested in your browser on your smartphone. So it's uh, very convenient. Um, I can show now. You see the home screen. And uh, wait a moment. I have to <coughs> snoop it. So now it gets fast. See my old. Uh, Samsung Galaxy Nexus is this, requests uh, my uh, uh, personal web page, patzke.org, now it's loaded, just only by um, uh, putting the, the smartphone on the tag. Also, already an interesting um, attack scenario because uh, imagine you have a smartphone, you have an old browser, which I heard is uh, very usually in the area of Android uh, smartphones and other, other systems too. And now when uh, there's a smart poster, you don't know uh, which URL is stored on it. Maybe someone has manipulated this poster, made this uh, uh, old tag, um, uh, broken this old tag and put an uh, own tag on it with some malicious URL that um, uh, serves some exploit for this browser. So this is already an attack scenario here that the smartphone request this URL without uh, questioning uh, it to me. And now what we can see here, um, <coughs> I think I switched to the presentation. It's uh, better to read. Uh, so, so this was um, this is somewhere in the dump uh, and could be read. Uh, is it really better to read? <laughs> uh, and what's important here is. Uh, This is a uh, world thing decoded. So you see patzke.org, this is my personal uh, uh, UR, um, uh, host. And um, uh, in, in uh, uh, this data, my um, yes, URL is encoded. Um, so this is another um, interesting thing we can see from a security perspective. There's no uh, transport layer encryption also with NFC. So NFC wasn't designed with uh, Uh, security in mind is uh, it was designed uh, with uh, yes that it, it's contactless in, in mind so this was the main reason that uh, it is built for and um, another thing I discovered today when I uh, have done the last uh, preparations for this presentation is uh, you see here the my URL patzke.org uh, And after this, uh, you see Oaken uh, uh, equals secret. So there's something different on it. And 
uh, I didn't have seen this before, but uh, factually it is so that um, when you have written something on this uh, text, it's uh, my fair ultra uh, light tag, and uh, you reuse this tag for a different uh, URL or uh, whatever of data, and this data is shorter, then uh, you can still see the old data because it is uh, not uh, overwritten. So I <laughs> wasn't aware of, uh, of it. And uh, when I have presented this, uh, prepared this, then um, I, I have seen this as, as a first time because I didn't concentrate it uh, to uh, such attack scenarios uh, until, until now. Yes. So uh, these are the uh, two security uh, relevant um, things uh, we can already see here. Anti-collision protocol, uh, also uh, interesting uh, from security perspective. Uh, so the most important <coughs> thing is here, you see the T is uh, the tag, R is the reader, so R is the uh, initiator who requests the UID from, uh, from the, the um, uh, tag. And in green, you see uh, the UID of, um, of uh, the tag, when it is sent by the tag, and when it is sent by the reader to select the tag. So this is basically the um, anti-collision protocol. <coughs> okay, so uh, let's go over to some uh, more interesting topics from security perspective. Um, uh, so, uh, security, uh, we have seen there is no encryption or uh, authentication on the low uh, layer of uh, NFC, so security has to be implemented by the application layer. Um, and um, very interesting uh, in this area are the payment systems, because when you have something uh, that has to do with uh, money, you want security. Um, so, uh, I looked at this. Um, uh, maybe, uh, uh, yes, I think many people here would uh, be um, customers of Sparkasse. And who is? Can I ask to see it? Ah, okay, okay. <laughs> so many victims. No, <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, so, uh, since end of 2011, uh, you are maybe not aware about it, but uh, all uh, Sparkassen in Germany have, uh, uh, which issued a new card to you, so this card has uh, NFC capabilities. So, um, the, uh, it is, um, uh, first it was called Geldkarte Kontaktlos, uh, and this small uh, pictures uh, were uh, printed on the back of the card. Then uh, the, uh, they have done some marketing and called in GeoGo, but uh, it is the same system, so it's no difference uh, between uh, GeoGo and Geldkarte Contactlo. So no uh, difference that I was able to to see. Um, uh, so basically. Uh, it's the gate carter system you may be already known before before the uh, contactless function was added to it. <laughs> I see many people now uh, look at their cards and uh, <laughs> see it. Um, and uh, a radio interface was added to the, uh, to the gate carter. So it's the same communication protocol as before. Uh, and now it has a uh, antenna on it uh, on the card and can communicate without uh, uh, putting this card in, in a card reader or whatever. You have only two touches on a uh, payment terminal. Um, I'm also interested who uh, has used Geldkarte until now? Ah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is uh, also usual, so not many people uh, use it. Uh, so back in time, I um, uh, got this uh, smartphone, so it's from 2012, and I, uh, I was aware of it that my new card was able to uh, uh, speak uh, w with NFC. So uh, this was, uh, yes, my, my uh, private project for, for a few days, weeks, um, to reverse engineer it a bit. Uh, uh, a bit. Um, 
there's an app for uh, for this card. So when you own an Android phone, uh, you can uh, download the app of uh, the Sparkasse. It's called S Reader, and uh, it shows you the amount of memory uh, of money loaded on the card or the validity of card. So uh, until when the, uh, the card is uh, valid, uh, and you can uh, uh, show, uh, look at the. Oops. Um, uh, it's a transaction that were done with this card. So when you have loaded money on this card or have uh, done some, some payments, you can uh, check them and uh, verify uh, how many money you have spent on a particular date in a particular time. <coughs> and I ask myself, is this all data or is there more that is not shown by, by this app? Um, so I started to uh, reverse engineer the GeoGo system. So uh, one tip for me, before you start to reverse engineer something, check if there's some uh, interesting info, because it's always frustrating when you reverse engineer weeks and then someone comes around and say, hey, here's a documentation for it. Um, so here uh, is um, really some um, uh, specification available. There's a leaked uh, specification which is hosted on servers from the uh, CCC Cologne. Um, it's from 1997, uh, so not very fresh. And uh, some things that are documented in it uh, don't work with uh, the new cards, um, but it's uh, helpful. And uh, there's a uh, EMV spec, so the communication protocol that is used for credit cards uh, too uh, is also used by this card. And uh, this is already very helpful here. Um, furthermore, there's an app. Um, I decomp uh, decompiled it with uh, first with Dex to Jar. I uh, uh, converted the Dalvik executable file uh, that is contained in the APK file to a JAR, Java file and used JD GUI as, um, as decompiler. And uh, it's not obfuscated, or uh, at this time it wasn't obfuscated uh, very much. So uh, you get the direct access to the sequences that you have to send to the uh, card. And to get the data back, you even see which data is addressed by it. So this EFID or EF rule, EF börse, EF betra betrag, um, these are names that are uh, also used in the um, uh, yeah, in the Geldkarte specification. So you get an idea how uh, the data is formatted that you uh, get back from uh, the Geo uh, Go card. Um, uh, further, I built a small fuzzer uh, to uh, go to the cards. So um, you have to imagine it's um, uh, set up like a, yes, like like a file system. You have folders. These are the application IDs, and you have files that you can address with uh, particular bytes in the protocol. And I built a small fuzzer uh, for it that enumerates these <coughs> bytes. Uh, you see it here, uh, so in the uh, top uh, A2, A3, A4 is, uh, is the address of the file and with uh, A4 this blob came back from the card and this is some data that was stored on, on it. Um, in this case it's only something that is uh, uh, desencrypted. Um, so um, the keys are not public, uh, not leaked. Uh, I'm not aware of it that they have leaked. Um, because in, in, in this area uh, also your account uh, number is uh, stored. <laughs> Okay, so uh, yes, I built an app that uh, extracted the data and it uh, read everything that the uh, S-Reader app has read, plus some additional data that I found on this card that the S-Reader app didn't uh, uh, present it to me. So um, one uh, data that I found was the date of activation, so quite boring, who inter is interested when the card was activated. Uh, the bank code number, so Bankleitzahl uh, in German, um, so you can uh, see when you uh, take your phone and put it on some other uh, uh, money pocket how, uh, from where he is maybe, because uh, in my case uh, you see it's a Sparkasse of a particular city. 
Uh, then a unique card identifier uh, that is interesting from privacy um, uh, perspective because uh, it's a bit of information which you can use to identify a particular user um, again. And uh, the card number. Uh, the card number is uh, this one here. So it's not the account number but uh, some number that is printed in the middle of the card. Um, um, I have no idea if uh, you can do something with it. Uh, the uh, people at uh, Sparkasse, I asked them and they said, no, uh, it's not really security relevant. <coughs> And um, the card number is too um, uh, interesting from uh, with the privacy point of view because it also identifies a card, uh, a particular card. Um, more interesting, there is stored an account number. It's not the account number of the customer, but it's uh, account number that is valid at this uh, Sparkasse that has issued the card. So, um, yes, uh, I think it's something uh, we can talk later, uh, later about it, uh, not in the front of a camera. <laughs> uh, it's interesting uh, uh, what uh, you can do with it. Uh, I know someone who has uh, tried it uh, to do something. And um, in addition, you see for each transac transaction that uh, was done, um, where the transaction, uh, so not where the uh, transaction was uh, done, but the uh, terminal ID where the uh, transaction was done. Um, this is the S-Reader app, so uh, it's that that uh, normally is shown by, by this app. Uh, you see how many you are um, uh, stored on it and uh, how long this card uh, can be used. Um, and you see the, um, the transactions, so when you have loaded money on it and when you have paid something with it. Um, this is uh, what the app has, uh, uh, was able to re uh, read, so um <coughs> you see in addition the card number uh, when it was activated and the yes, uh, account number and, and the uh, bank identifier uh, number of uh, the card. Uh, from security perspective, yes, nice, but uh, uh, it's, I think, in, in, for privacy reasons, it's uh, not so fine uh, in the screen. Um, th that's th um, this is the next screen um, of this app, and now you can see here, maybe I can do it with the mouse pointer better, um, also all transactions and in addition to the uh, S-Reader app, uh, the terminal ID number or the um, uh, merchant card ID number, which was uh, the counterpart in the transaction. And uh, this is already interesting. You see here in uh, uh, at two uh, times here, I use this card to um, pay some small amounts of money. Uh, factually, I was uh, uh, in shops and we tried with the Proxmark uh, with some people and the cards, so we paid so with this Proxmark in background and uh, tried to sniff the communication between the uh, payment terminal and the card, but unfortunately it uh, uh, didn't succeed. And you can also see here that at um, here at uh, in 2012 in April of 2012 and here again in uh, September I <coughs> was at the same uh, payment point. So this is information that you can uh, derive from it. Um, there's no uh, central database where the, uh, there's a connection between these identifiers and um, uh, and particular uh, uh, payment terminals, but um, yes, someone can build it and then uh, from this information you can uh, see where someone uh, has uh, done his payments. <coughs> So summary of the short uh, GeoGo analysis is uh, um, it was not so bad from security perspective. Uh, you have the small uh, um, privacy um, issues with it. 
the payment itself, uh, some from the um, uh, specification, what is public, you can see that this is uh, secured cryptographically, so uh, this is nothing uh, that you can break uh, within a few days. Um, uh, there is a Casa to go app. Uh, this is a payment app that can use on um, on Android phones. So uh, you can load it on the Android phones. You need a, a, a merchant card from uh, your Sparkasse, and then you can use this uh, app to uh, make small payments against such um, uh, uh, Giro Go cards. I uh, made. Here, a small analysis of it, and have seen that the retailer card is verified online. So the app relies on an online connection, and everything is uh, uh, done um, uh, online. And um, I didn't found a possibility to uh, convince the app to or, uh, and the back end that I have a merchant card. And uh, I didn't go so far to uh, get a merchant card at uh, at the Sparkasse. Because yes, uh, uh, I I'm, I'm have not the intention to to uh, do the, uh, what they expect, but uh, uh, it will, would be for reasons of uh, yes, security research. But uh, maybe an interesting project for you uh, when, <laughs> when you have time or, or need a topic for uh, thesis. Um, the communication with the back end, uh, this is um, yes, uh, not, so not so usual for um, smartphone apps, it was uh, secured well, so the communication is uh, authenticated and encrypted and you have the possibility to uh, perform man in the middle attacks on it from outside, so you have to manipulate the app itself if you want to do this. Um, so. Uh, the, from the perspective of the payment process, I uh, haven't seen obvious possibilities um, to attack it, but um, yes, I, I think um, it's a topic uh, where someone who has the time could uh, maybe find uh, more uh, about it uh, if there are for, uh, vulnerabilities. And uh, one aspect of, of the system is the pay payment runs uh, on a, a smartphone, so um, the, the app of, um, of the shop where you um, pay with it when they use uh, the smartphone, they can naturally uh, manipulate this app, uh, for example, in a way that it shows you um, amount of money, uh, money and um, uh, it gets more money from your card. So um, this would be uh, a possibility to uh, attack <coughs> the system with a manipulated um, um, uh, uh, Casa to go app. Okay, this is um, yes. Uh, so uh, now I would show you how widespread this app uh, is. Uh, you have seen only one guy here has uh, used Geld card at all. And when you look at the screenshot, uh, it was from last week. So uh, 100 downloads. Um, yes. <laughs> So if you want to do security research for fame, I don't think this is an <laughs> interesting target. <laughs> Okay, some uh, words on EMV. So EMV is a protocol that is used um, here with this uh, uh, cards. So the EC cards use EMV, credit cards uh, use uh, the EMV protocol. And uh, from this perspective, uh, it's um, interesting from, uh, for, for uh, someone who plans to do security research on uh, such pay payment systems. Um, uh, so as I said before, uh, EMV defines um, uh, uh, structures that are somewhat similar to, to uh, folders, uh, uh, to file systems. So we have folders, we have these files, but you can also do other things with, uh, with the EMV protocol. You can sign a few uh, bytes that you send to the cards and uh, yes, everything that you need for to, uh, to do uh, secure payments. And uh, generally the communication protocol looks like this. You have have the communication class and uh, an instruction, two parameters, mm -hmm. and uh, some data, and uh, send a length of this data to, to the card. And finally, you finish the packet with the length of data that you expect from, um, from the target. Um, 
the activation sequence of the uh, gate card as you go, I, AID looks uh, as shown here. So this is uh, the application ID of it. So uh, in file system language, this is a folder. <coughs> and uh, you can use uh, these commands to read data records uh, from it. And EF betrag is, uh, the uh, contains the amount of uh, loaded money. Uh, money. And EF browser is uh, the file that contains uh, the bank ID and this uh, Omino's uh, account number. And transactions can be read with uh, the sequence. So uh, this bytes here correspond to P1 and P2, which are generic parameters of uh, the length of, of one byte. Um, generally, data is in clear text, in ASCII uh, encoding. Um, this is true for the uh, credit cards. Uh, or BCD encoded. Um, it was so on uh, on the GeoGo system. So my 25 euro are encoding as uh, uh, 0x25, 0x00. It's uh, good when you only have the uh, hex dump available. You can directly read the uh, your data from the hex dump. Um, so okay, let's look at credit cards. When you uh, was on Twitter uh, the last uh, week, then you maybe have seen this. So um, uh, the credit card uh, companies um, try very yes, so somewhat penetrant to uh, to push their contactless uh, payment cards to uh, to the market. So you see here when you use uh, um, uh, uh, contactless uh, visa payment at Starbucks in Britain, you get a what is this a free giant chocolate coin for free. Um, I think they make it because they have now invested very much money to to build these cards and the uh, whole infrastructure. And uh, I don't know people who use it uh, very much. So uh, maybe someone of you who, who have used uh, contactless credit card payments. Hey. <laughs> Two persons. <laughs> yes. <coughs> So um, usual systems are MasterCard PayPass and uh, Visa PayWave. These are the uh, names uh, uh, that are used for the systems. And again, here I used my NFC fuzzer to take a look on it. And uh, here's the dump of this NFC fuzzer. Uh, so what? Oh, this is uh, not uh, very good readable. So I uh, tell you, you see in uh, this area here. Uh, this is the credit card number, which is printed on the front. So the number you uh, enter also when you uh, want to buy something on the internet. And this is the expiry date. Uh, and in addition, there is also the, the card number. Uh, I don't know what uh, you, uh, you can do with this number, but um, these two uh, data uh, values are already very interesting when you want to do payments um, on the internet. and. Uh, the scary part of the story is that uh, you can read them without any authentication or authorization. So, so you just ask the card, hey, uh, give me my uh, credit uh, card or give me this file and you get the credit card number and the expiry date for free. Um, uh, then the, um, I extended this app and uh, yes, you can maybe see uh, at the bottom the credit card number. Uh, naturally obfuscated <laughs> and uh, the expiry day <coughs> of uh, this card. So uh, the credit card companies say, oh, this, uh, this is no big problem because we have the card verification code, this uh, number that is printed at the back of the card. So, uh, so here where my finger is. <laughs> uh, and uh, they say, uh, furthermore, the shops must verify it. So there's no possibility with this values to uh, shop anything. Uh, my experience was uh, different uh, because, uh, yes, uh, last week, this is a screenshot from last week, I uh, verified it again. Um, uh, it's from Amazon and they ask for the credit card number, for the name of the credit card holder. So this is something you have to maybe uh, um, ask uh, uh, your victim for or get it on some <laughs> other way and uh, the expiry date. But um, uh, uh, yes, uh, and uh, Amazon uh, here 
doesn't ask uh, for the CVZ. And uh, when I have done this uh, research some time ago, uh, one week later, uh, uh, later I ordered um, um, concert cards and uh, then uh, I uh, got to the payment paid by credit card and then I seen okay they didn't ask it too so everything I needed for the payment is uh, readable contactless from this card and uh, from my point of view this is a big security issue from the uh, point of view of the credit card um, owners uh, this is no big deal <laughs> say, say. <coughs> Some implementation deta details, um, the application IDs uh, used uh, to read the data depend on the cards, so uh, they even uh, differ between uh, countries. So uh, I tried it with uh, cards from UK or from the USA and uh, the code I have written to read the data doesn't, uh, doesn't uh, function with, um, with uh, these cards. And uh, but, but um, in there are public uh, lists where very many application IDs are listed, and the application IDs are not uh, no, no secret. So they are even printed at the bottom of uh, the receipts you get when you make a credit card payment. Um. <coughs> Oops! Oh, the browser comes up. I clicked on the link. <laughs> Uh, so here are the uh, sequences you have to send to to the card uh, to s uh, s switch to the particular application ID for uh, German Visa and Mastercard uh, systems. And the interesting file is addressed by this sequence, and uh, then everything is in ASCII encoding, so no encryption or obfuscation or whatever. You can uh, read uh, the data directly from from a dump of uh, it. So implementation, uh, uh, I made one, so the screenshots you have seen of this dark app, um, uh, this was written by me, it's, um, yes, it's um, a bit outdated now, uh, something uh, with new cards work different, uh, I uh, didn't find the time to update it uh, the last weeks, uh, maybe I make some, some updates on it, um, but uh, yes, it's uh, hosted on GitHub, uh, I put it uh, public so you can download here and uh, use it for your own uh, research or whatever you want to do with it. Um, I uh, also published it at uh, the Google Play Store but uh, they pulled it uh, <laughs> somewhere. <laughs> Uh, but there are still uh, other apps on the Google Play Store, so uh, when you are interested in this uh, topic, um, I have some links um, um, uh, in, in this presentation with apps that also work with, uh, with uh, newer and more cards, uh, but um, not all of them are open sourced. <coughs> So, summary of credit card vulnerabilities, uh, there's no authentication, no authorization needed to access the data. This is uh, um, ugly, I see. Um, no transport encryption, so uh, the data, while it is uh, uh, transferred over the air, uh, over the radio interface, uh, is not encrypted, so uh, someone uh, with a sensible receiver could uh, possibly it, uh, sniff it from the air uh, a few meters ago. Um, uh, it is not necessary because the credit cards already support uh, a protocol that is more secure. So uh, there's an, a secure EMV mode, um, which is also known as uh, chip and pin. And um, it uh, is cryptographically secured, so you, um, there were attacks on it in the past, but um, uh, it doesn't uh, blow your, per, uh, your um, ID number or, or your um, uh, credit card number over the air, um, uh, the main advantage of it. But the Maxtripe mode is uh, still implemented on the cards for um, uh, backward uh, compa uh, compatibility reasons. So everything that, uh, or almost everything that is stored on this uh, max type on the back of this card, is uh, also readable uh, from uh, via NFC over the air. 
Um, yes, uh, another vulnerability, the payment process. So the people which has, uh, have tried it, uh, maybe um, also have uh, already seen it, that um, uh, the payment process, and, uh, process works as follows. The salesperson enters an amount in uh, the payment terminal. Uh, you as customer puts the, uh, puts the card on the payment terminal and then the payment is done for uh, uh, amounts of money until up to, I don't know how many it is, my biggest payment was I think uh, 25 euro uh, is it. And um, yes, what, what is missing is the authorization. So until now we entered a pin uh, in the payment terminal to authorize this um, uh, payment. And with a contactless payment, you don't have uh, this authorization step anymore. Uh, the Credit card companies say, okay, uh, you don't need this because uh, when you put the card on the payment terminal, this is um, already uh, the uh, expression of consent of the uh, customer that he wants to do this payment. And now uh, when you look at um, uh, such uh, devices here, this is a mobile credit card uh, payment terminal with uh, uh, GPS in it and um, it is able to perform uh, NFC payments. So I uh, don't have tried it. Um, it costs, uh, I think when, when I checked this, it costs uh, 25 euro a month to uh, uh, rent this device and you have to rent it over a year or, uh, or even more. So uh, for private uh, security research a bit much, only to try uh, one payment um, with it. But uh, yes, my attack scenario that I imagine is uh, you, the card must not move to the terminal, but the terminal can also move to the card and uh, perform the payments. Without uh, that the user is um, uh, aware of it, and um, this is also an aspect of uh, of it. But um, yes, um, yes. There are furthermore relaying attacks. Uh, some weeks ab ago, a paper was uh, uh, released by uh, some scientists, and uh, they uh, have uh, implemented a relay uh, a relaying attack. So. Um, you, the attack scenario is you uh, read the card at, um, at a particular um, uh, place with a smartphone. So it can also been, uh, be in a money pocket and you uh, put the smartphone on it. And someone other uh, performs a payment by simulating the card uh, on, on a payment terminal. I, uh, I think they also have done it uh, with, uh, with a Proxmark or maybe with two smartphones. Uh, even so, um, it is possible that the card and the payment are performed on completely different locations uh, with uh, uh, this relaying attack, uh, and uh, they proved that this is um, also possible. So, uh, interesting attack. Okay. Uh, Let's go to access control systems. So access control systems, uh, where I uh, uh, checked it, uh, were often based on dump, uh, 125 kilohertz tags. Uh, why dump, uh, you maybe ask? Yes, because uh, they don't have a complex anti-collision protocol or what uh, you think they are working in this way. So when there's energy uh, that they can work, they simply blow their ID out to the air and do it repeatedly uh, until uh, they uh, lose the energy and uh, yes. Um, as you can uh, uh, maybe already uh, think, it is uh, not encrypted. And uh, now I uh, I show it with uh, first with a proxmark here. So changing the antenna. Uh, so now the proxmark is an uh, uh, in a mode uh, that uh, that he works as a, a card reader, and when I put this card in here of the uh, antenna, you see that uh, something is 
this plate here. And <coughs> yes, uh, this number showed, uh, shown here is also uh, printed on this card here. And uh, this is all the data that is sent by the Proxmark. So not, uh, uh, not, not uh, big amounts of data, only a few bytes. And these few bytes are already uh, 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 enough to uh, open the door of uh, this particular um, system. And now I will show you a small video of it. Where is it? Yeah. Uh, I started. Uh, so you can see that started again. So this is the access control system, and uh, laptop is Proxmark. You see the card opens the store. This is a valid card, and uh, you see the antenna is. There's no magic behind it or some something to, to fool it, so it uh, doesn't work uh, uh, yet here. <coughs> and uh, now um, I enter the command to read uh, the no to simulate a card, but without uh, giving it an identifier. And you see the. Uh, access control system complains about it. It uh, shows a red light and uh, shows me that I can en can't enter with this card. Yeah. Uh, now I read the card uh, out from uh, with the proxmark. You see on the display there's uh, something shown on it. What you have seen here in the background. Something similar. This was an older ver version of the uh, Proxmark software, and now I do some copy and paste. Brings the uh, uh, Proxmark again in the uh, simulation mode, and you see the door opens. So you can, um, when you succeed to yeah. get uh, uh, an ID one time uh, with uh, with a reader and uh, you own this ID, then you can use it over and over again to, to um, bypass such an access control system. And uh, uh, such access control system are still uh, widely used. Uh, even I, I see, uh, see it even in um, secure uh, areas of uh, airports. I don't say uh, where. <laughs> no. <coughs> this camera. <laughs> um, and uh, yes, so it's a simple replay uh, attack, uh, and uh, this replay attack opens you the doors for uh, uh, yes uh, offices, secure areas, whatever. You only have to sniff uh, uh, such a card. So um, how you can do it? You uh, there are two ways. You you can go with the reader to uh, someone who has this card, maybe in his uh, pocket, and shot put uh, the antenna on it and uh, uh, it's very probable that uh, you will succeed. Or another possibility is you put, uh, put a receiver somewhere near to a reader uh, and when the people come at the morning to the work and open the door, then your uh, receiver would uh, hopefully uh, sensible enough uh, to sniff this data. and. Um, uh, in the evening you come back uh, and uh, you have IDs. Um, it is said that uh, this attack is possible up to 10 meters ago. Uh, there's a question? Yeah, so basically your antenna needs to be next to the receiver. You could do something like print a very flat antenna and stick it on the receiver? Uh, this uh, this would be possible too, yes. Uh, uh, it's also a valid um, uh, attack now. So um, yes, that that would be possible. <coughs> so then you don't even need a sensible receiver. Uh, you uh, something crappy could be uh, used for it. And it's uh, quite cheap to uh, uh, implement it with uh, with a microcontroller and some uh, um, some electronics around it. So there are. Um, instructions on the internet how you can uh, build something that simulates a card uh, like this. <coughs> 
So yes, um, now I uh, uh, come to uh, the end. So um, a few words how you can secure build secure NFC systems or how you use them secure in a secure way. So uh, first. Uh, your personal protection uh, when you have uh, such cards in your pocket and you uh, feel now unconfident with it um, you have two uh, ways you can put the card into s uh, cards into sleeves which uh, isolate it uh, uh, from um, uh, from such readers and then they are aren't readable anymore um, I uh, when I have done this research, uh, some um, producers of uh, such sleeves come to me and they uh, thrown at it with, uh, uh, with uh, many models and uh, uh, all of them lo looked very ugly and um, uh, they wanted to uh, ask me, they, they asked me if uh, they are secure or not and uh, my experience was that not all of them uh, uh, were able to uh, isolate uh, the communication completely. So uh, it was still possible in some cases to, to read the data uh, from the cards or to, uh, to read something from, uh, from a credit card. So when you use such a sleeve, uh, maybe you try with a smartphone uh, or something if the card uh, isn't really readable. Or the... Uh, Yes, uh, the uh, brutal method is you cut it. So you take uh, something and uh, cut to the card because the antennas usually go uh, around here. So only a small cut uh, at the corner of the card uh, is uh, in the most cases enough to, um, to destroy the NFC functionality of the card completely. So when you sure that you don't uh, want uh, to do uh, NFC payments or whatever, then you can opt out with a cut from, <laughs> from this uh, uh, feature. <laughs> yes? Wouldn't it be uh, enough to um, destroy the chip that, control, uh, that uh, contains the data with uh, like... Uh. I think the, the Cars Computer Club um, has a tutorial to build an RFID in that house. Yes, uh, not in the case of credit cards, for example, or the EC card, because the uh, chip is also the chip that is used for secure payments uh, at uh, classical uh, payment terminals. So when you destroy the chip itself, you yeah. you only have the uh, the Max Tribe profile available, and this is insec insecure. So you better uh, don't do it with with uh, such cards. But uh, maybe when you have other systems where you uh, sure you don't need this chip or uh, I have uh, here such uh, cards uh, Studentenwerk Berlin they don't have a chip so the only chip is uh, somewhere hidden in this card this uh, small uh, uh, chip uh, that uh, implements the NFC uh, payment but uh, I think this card makes no sense without um, NFC so uh, but it's also a possibility <coughs> Another point is uh, maybe someone of you gets in the position to build a, a, a product that uses NFC somewhere in the future. Um, and uh, yes, so what you should consider when you build a product. Um, there are known in insecure systems. For example, uh, the MIFA, uh, MIFA Classic system is its um, Yes, um, the cards are not so expensive. This is good when you uh, build a product, but uh, the crypto uh, which they uh, implement is crappy. Uh, so it's uh, possible to break the keys wi within a few uh, minutes, or, or yeah, a few minutes are enough when you own such a card and then you can make copies of the card, manipulate uh, the data that which is stored on the card uh, and um, many of, this, uh, of, of cards of um, um, uh, canteens uh, and mensas in uh, universities uh, are based on MIFA Classic so they are vulnerable, vulnerable against uh, such attacks. So, uh, you, you can uh, make backups of it and restore them and uh, then you have the old amount of money after you, you have paid with it. This uh, uh, was a possible attack on such cards. Um, but <coughs> um, 
before you now start to everyone to buy uh, the uh, stuff you need for this, it's not so expensive. Um, there are uh, offline and online payment systems and in most cases after a short amount of time uh, this would be detected and then, uh, yes, I don't know what happens but it's not allowed. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> Don't be evil. <laughs> If we build a product and uh, you are nailed on an insecure system because some manager says, okay, uh, we have this uh, nice cheap cards uh, and we have this cards that cost uh, uh, three times uh, as much as, uh, as the insecure card, so we take the cheap cards. And uh, this is uh, totally normal in product uh, development. Um, then uh, for MyFair Classic there are still possibilities that you can use these cards uh, securely when you consider uh, uh, some uh, uh, conditions. But um, yes, I personally wouldn't feel confident with it to base my, my uh, product on an um, uh, insecure system. But uh, there are possibilities, mitigations. Um, where possible, sure, encrypt uh, the communication uh, and ensure integrity. So also consider that uh, someone can sniff the communication between a uh, card reader and the card. So even the communication canal uh, channels uh, should be encrypted. Uh, when uh, sensible data is exchanged and um, there were also side channel attacks on um, such card systems. So uh, the on, on the Chaos Communication Congress two or three years ago someone presented um, some uh, attacks on the Deathfire cards. Deathfire um, is also from MyFair, a system from MyFair and was considered as secure. Uh, but he was able to uh, extract the um, uh, keys from the card within a few hours with a side channel attack. So he used the power consumption of the card to, to recalculate the keys. So we should consider uh, such attacks too. <coughs> um, replay and relay attacks, as I told before, uh, you can uh, read the card for at one location, pass the data to some uh, other location and then replay the data you have uh, or, or the communication you have uh, done at a particular place. So uh, also consider uh, this. Um, Sensible data naturally should be um, uh, identified and uh, the access should only be possible when the reader is authenticated and authorized. So not everyone should be uh, able to uh, read sensible data from the cards. Um, and if you use uh, this um, uh, text as uh, um, uh, storage medium, uh, like uh, I stored the URL on this uh, tag here, then you um, should write protect this text. But uh, what uh, can happen is that someone destroys the text and puts his own tag on it. So uh, it's a valid attack scenario and uh, you shouldn't rely, rely completely on uh, NFC if you uh, plan to build something that uh, should be available. Or uh, what is possible too, tags can be move, uh, moved to some different uh, position. So if you use uh, NFC uh, for uh, determination of position of uh, your customers, like uh, in the touch and travel system, then um, this shouldn't be your uh, only data source. So uh, in fact the touch and travel system uses um, uh, position determination by the uh, mobile uh, uh, communication network too to ensure that uh, uh, no manipulation is done here. <coughs> and yes transmissions. Uh, so I didn't try it on myself but uh, you can read in different sources uh, that uh, it can be sniffed up to 10 meters again, uh, away from, uh, uh, from the communication between card and reader. 
Um, and um, there's uh, one source that claims that uh, it should be possible to uh, uh, initiate a communication between a card up to 1,5 meters, but um, I'm not sure how realistic it is. You probably you need to uh, have very strong electromagnetic fields and uh, Yes, it's possibly not so healthy to do it uh, in this way. <laughs> uh, by the way, um, so you can uh, maybe don't see it uh, from uh, far, but I um, secured myself in a way that uh, when I put put uh, uh, some reader on my uh, cash pocket, then. Uh, here stands, uh, here gibt's nicht zu sehen, so nothing to see here, <laughs> also a possibility when you have some NFC tags available for it. <coughs> okay, and uh, when you have a system uh, or, or maybe an existing system and you know, okay, we now have a vulnerability which makes it able to copy cards and make backups or whatever, then it's always a good idea to monitor the usage. So when for example, you have a public transportation system and uh, a ticket is used in two completely different locations at the same time you know this ticket, uh, this particular ticket could be locked out because uh, someone makes uh, something evil with, uh, with it. Okay, some NFC hacking tools. When you're uh, interested in this topic, uh, Android devices are already nice um, a uh, nice playground uh, uh, to uh, make some NFC hacking with it. So you have uh, APIs to communicate with uh, tags, uh, to uh, interact with them, to uh, read data from it, to write data to particular uh, tag systems. Uh, and there's also a good um, development guide. Uh, it supports many common standards, so um, uh, can already be used for m many uh, stuff. Um, and um, yes, it uh, can uh, communicate with smart cards and read and write NDEF text. So NDEF text are uh, such uh, storage text where you store URLs on it or uh, other data. Mm. But uh, the restriction is uh, it uh, doesn't support uh, proprietary systems very well. So uh, the widespread uh, logic prime system, for example, uh, you are not possible to uh, communicate with, uh, with uh, these tags and uh, you don't have low level access uh, to the card at the uh, uh, very low uh, bit communication level. Uh, the card simulation is restricted. You can simulate cards with the Android API, but uh, um, as far as I know, NDEF was the first. That was definitely possible. And I think uh, now it's also possible to uh, to make uh, EMV uh, communication. So you already can simulate a credit card with it. <coughs> and uh, yes, so when you already have such uh, such a phone or tablet, then uh, yes, uh, you already have the device. You can uh, do something with it in this area. But uh, if you don't have it, it costs several uh, hundred euros uh, possibly, and um, maybe not uh, not the amount of money you want to invest in uh, paying with it. Um, there are existing apps uh, for uh, playing around with NFC. So NXP, uh, um, uh, pro producer of uh, uh, NFC tags, has released a tech info app where you can read data from tags. Uh, tech writer app uh, where you can uh, write to text or write protect them. So uh, things like here writing URLs uh, on, on text is uh, possible with a, a smartphone. Uh, NFC tech info is uh, from some other developer. <coughs> uh, it gives you very uh, much information about uh, text you try to read with, uh, with your smartphone. 
Uh, the banking card reader uh, NFC is an app where you can, uh, I tried uh, some um, credit cards that to read them with uh, this app and um, it succeeded everywhere so uh, looks uh, nice for also for demonstration and to check if it's uh, if your new card sleeve uh, which should protect the card uh, uh, works well or if your cut was enough to uh, disable the NFC functionality of your credit card and um, it is based on a uh, API that is available on GitHub. So you can use this API to, to build uh, EMV communication uh, uh, packets. And card test is something similar. Um, it uh, can be used to uh, read credit cards too, but doesn't show the complete credit card number. Um, NFC reader, so when you don't have an um, uh, Android phone or want to do some uh, other uh, attacks like uh, attacks on the MyFi classic mm -hmm. systems, you can use uh, uh, cheap NFC readers like Tiki Tech mm -hmm. and there's OpenPCD, um, all the, uh, of them cost um, uh, below 50 euro uh, as I have checked the last time and uh, there's an API for it so libNFC can be used to communicate with uh, 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 this uh, readers and to use them and uh, it's a uh, yes, cheap entry um, to, um, to NFC hacking. Uh, same drawbacks as above, uh, above so as Android smartphones, uh, not so much because um, in fact uh, with NFC readers it's already possible to make, um, um, uh, to do uh, attacks on the MyFair classic system which needs particular, uh, a, a good timing uh, to attack the system and uh, this is not possible with Android phones. Uh. And Proxmark uh, 3, this is uh, the device I have uh, used <coughs> here, so uh, this is best when you uh, want uh, to do um, other uh, stuff, so for example um, performing man in the middle attacks on communication between card and reader. Um, uh, or uh, to simulate ca uh, cards to um, make uh, research on systems in uh, on uh, uh, in, in the one uh, uh, 125 kilohertz uh, frequency area, and so on. Uh, then um, this is a good um, toy, but it's expensive. Sure, uh, there's a FPGA uh, on it um, f uh, that you can do very um, uh, precise timing, but um, yes, it's expensive. So when you only want to play an evening with it, it's not uh, something you possibly buy. And uh, its usage is a bit hacky. So it's a project, it's an open source project, and uh, everyone who makes something uh, puts his code in this GitHub repository and um, uh, it's an advantage because you can do very much with it. Uh, there's already many um, interesting code available, but it's also not so stable every time. And uh, usually you work with the uh, current repository to, uh, for research on it. Any other questions? If uh, you remember your question maybe later we can talk about it so I would be at the uh, event too later and uh, you can also send me a mail or yes uh, send me uh, via Twitter some DM um, and thank you. <laughs>